All right, blessings, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Empath Protection Class, Empath Protection Class. So this class is not only going to be about how to protect yourself as an empath, but it's also going to teach you some techniques on how to cleanse and clear yourself as an empath as well. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to talk about is what is an empath? And anyone who's been on my teachings, you know, I, I try to simplify everything so that it, it could be understood across the board. So I'm going to try to just keep it really simple and straight to the point as far as, you know, what an empath is. An empath is somebody who has empathy, empathy, empathy on a supernatural level, meaning uh, empathy where you can feel it in your soul, in your mind, in your body. Empathy to where you can place yourself in that person's situation and see it from that person's point of view, even if you've never been through it. You may have heard some people say, well, you can't teach anyone or share something with someone unless you've been through it yourself. And for the most part, that can be true. However, as an empath, an empath can actually feel the emotions of something that they've never been through. Empaths can use their imagination saying, okay, if I was in this situation, how would I go about doing it? Or how would it make me feel? And as an empath, you can have real life feelings on the imagination that you created to see how you would feel about it. It's just like if someone said, you know, how would I feel if one of my children died? And then they allowed themselves to be in the moment as if that happened. Well, they will develop, you start to develop true emotions and feelings on that scenario. Now, the thing about an empath is because of that, we have to be careful with allowing ourselves to stay in those type of visions too long because now we can start manifesting some of these things just so we can experience those feelings and emotions. And we don't want to keep ourselves in that and manifest something that wasn't supposed to be so. So keep that in mind when using your imagination, your mind to help you feel what someone else is going through. Do not allow yourself to make it your reality. Remember, it's just an imagination for the moment, for the teaching. So when I do that, I tell myself, okay, that was just for training purposes. We're gonna avoid that. Voiding it means that's not a manifestation I'm gonna place out there in the universe. Meaning that that vision, that feeling, that scenario that I created, I'm gonna pull the intentions of that back because I don't want that to stay out there and then become something of manifestation. So again, in simple terms, an empath is someone who has strong empathy on a supernatural source, whether it's feeling, seeing, hearing, just knowing. Now, there are different types of empaths. You have some empaths who are able to feel other people's physical pain. Meaning if someone comes around you, all of a sudden you start to have having an ailment that you typically wouldn't deal with. And you're like, why did my knee start hurting all of a sudden? I tell you about an experience. Uh, my daughter, when I would pick her up from work, whatever pain she was having in her body, the minute she gets in the truck, I instantly feel it. And I say, baby, you're, you're, you're right knee hurt? And she'd be like, yeah, because I felt it as soon as she got in. My knee wasn't hurting until she got in, you know? She might get in and I said, oh, the lower back is tight because I felt it. Now, why was I able to automatically feel it? Because she's my daughter and I have this strong empathy for her already. So because I don't want her to be hurting because she's my baby, I automatically allow myself to feel whatever she's going through so I can help her through it. Now, is that all the way healthy? Probably not. Some things I have to allow her to go through but I can at least help her with the things that are maybe outside of her, you know, control or some things that, you know, I can do to prevent her from having to go to the doctor to do it if need be. So physical pain, that includes organs, that includes uh, uh, physical symptoms like inflammation and swelling. It can be any type of physical ailment a person is dealing with that uh, you can take on 
for the sake of divination, which is knowing what that person is going through. Okay. Now let's say you're in a store and you feel somebody's random pain. This just shows that not only do you have empathy for those that you love, but you also ha have empathy for those who are just out, out there in the world. You're just an empathetic person. You love humanity, you love humans. So you may tend to take on random people's stuff because of your love for humanity. Now, you can also be an empath that also deals with emotions, feelings. This is like when you stand next to someone or a family member or loved one. And while standing next to them, you feel some type of negative emotion or sometimes it can be a happy emotion, right? So if you find yourself next to someone and you find yourself getting emotional, you know, in a sad or depressed uh, type of way, you may be picking up on their inner feelings, their inner self, their emotional body. This is how they're feeling deep within. And sometimes the person that you're feeling it from may not even realize that they feel that way inside. They may not even realize that that's the energy that they're giving off. But as an empath, what we do is we're like a, a scanner. We kind of scan their energy, even unintentionally, and we're able to pick up on their true feelings. So when you ask them, hey, you doing good today? You okay today? Just asking a person that as an empath can allow that person to say, you know, I'm actually not doing too well. And they may start explaining it. And then you as an empath can help them release whatever emotions or feelings that they had inside. Okay, you may be an empath that deal with energy. So as an empath with energy, sometimes I can walk past a person or walk in a room and I can feel the energy off that person or that room or that object. So for me, if I walk past someone who has negative energy attached to them, I get a, an allergic-like reaction. I start to itch. My skin starts to itch when I get around negative energy. So that's my empath. That's my clairsentience way of feeling the energy around me. And you can feel different types of energy with experience. Over time, you learn with what certain energies feel like. So when I'm dealing with energy of the light, it's more of a lighter, cooler type of feeling, a cooler temperature versus some of the, the negative energy may be a itchy, heavier type of energy. So you feel based on, you know, what your divine abilities are. But you can also be trained to be able to feel a certain type of way as well. Now, let's talk about is an empath a gift or a curse? I hear, I hear this a lot, you know, uh, being an empath is a curse. And the way I look at it is being an empath is a gift or a curse based on your experience and how you look at being an empath. We have to remember that an empath is a divine ability. Divination means to receive an answer from a supernatural source. So if I'm able to use my physical body as a divination tool to feel someone else's pain, then I had to be given this specific divine gift for a reason, right? Like it has to be part of my divine purpose to use this ability to help people. So when we don't embrace being an empath, it can be a little harder on us and it can come off as a curse because we haven't fully embraced it. We look at it as other people's energies are just kind of beating us up and just weighing us down. But when we embrace being an empath, we learn how to actually uh, deal with that energy and protect ourselves as an empath. And then we can use it as a gift versus a curse. So that's what this whole class is about, is how to basically be an empath and, and use it as a gift, like actually use it in your divine uh, purpose. Now let's cover some empath symptoms, okay? We already talked a little bit about, we know that we can feel other people's emotions and uh, feelings and physical body pain, energies, okay? But sometimes, when we absorb too much of other people's energies and feelings and emotions, we can find ourselves in a position of being weighed down. Just think about it. 
Your body's energy is weight. It's all extra weight, right? So it can weigh you down, literally. Okay? It can make you feel depressed because taking on so many people's darkness, it attaches to your own darkness that you have within yourself. And then when you, when it attaches to your darkness, it makes you even more hairy, uh, uh, heavier and, you know, just just want to disconnect from the world. So you have to, so you end up dealing with apathy and despair, little pleasure in doing things, don't want to be around anybody. A lot of empaths say, I don't like crowds because again, you feel so heavy, you don't want to be around other people's energies. You may find that an empath is somebody who sleeps a lot, takes naps, because again, heavy energy. And sometimes sleeping is the only way we feel that we can recover. So those are some of the symptoms of an empath. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and say one more. An empath uh, symptom is also when you have feelings and emotions that you can't pinpoint where it's coming from. Like in other words, it's not yours. So empaths tend to say, man, I feel angry, but I really don't know what I'm mad about. Or I feel depressed, but I really don't have anything to be depressed about. It could be somebody else's energy that you absorb and now you're feeling it for yourself even though it's not yours so we're going to talk about you know later how to release and clear okay okay so the next portion we're going to go into is talking about grounding grounding is one of the most important things that an empath must do is ground right so grounding deals with what allowing our physical body mind soul spirit be connected to the earth one with the earth and being grounded it allows the earth to pull some of those residual energies that might be stored in you and replace it with good energies okay so one of the ways to ground yourself would be like to walk into the grass uh, barefoot as you walk into the grass barefoot the grass is able to connect to the root chakra the feet which then connects you to the earth. So you can even imagine as you're walking on the grass that your feet becomes roots in the earth. And that'll even make the connection to the earth even stronger. Now, if you are not in a position where you can go outside to the grass, you can always use your imagination. You can use your imagination and all the techniques you're gonna learn today. Okay, trees. Trees are great ways of grounding because trees, the roots go very deep. So when a person hugs a tree, usually the, the tree will absorb uh, that person's energies, especially the residual and the bad energies, push it into the ground, and then the tree will replenish you with good energy, with light energy. So the trees can be a really good filtration center for your mind, body, and soul. And because trees are living things, I always recommend that you greet the tree and thank the tree for the job that it performed on you. Okay, if you're not able to get to a tree, then of course, again, you can imagine yourself hugging a tree and it will work all the same. Now, another good technique to use with um, grounding with trees, especially with rejuvenation, is laying your spine up to the tree because the kundalini runs up the spine, the life force energy, which we're gonna cover later. So laying up against the tree with your spine, not only are you uh, cleansing the kundalini, but you're also rejuvenating it uh, simultaneously. Okay, maybe you don't want to hug the tree, but you can stand in the aura of the tree. The tree has an energy field. So let's say you walk under a tree and you're just standing under the leaves, but you're not actually touching the, the branch, the trunk. You can stand in the aura of the tree and still receive the same benefits from the tree, even though you're not touching it. And usually what'll happen with that is because the roots go so deep, the tree roots, the energy from it can still ground you while the leaves can push the light energy into you. So it's kind of like a cycle that happens just by standing there. And again, this is 
something that you can also use your imagination to do as well. So since uh, I'm sure most of us are not outside at the moment, we're going to uh, do this using our imagination, one, for demonstration, two, so that you have confidence that in doing this in the mind, that it will happen in real life. So I want you to choose a technique of grounding. It can be walking barefooted, hugging a tree, sitting your back against a tree, or literally just standing in the tree's aura, however you feel comfortable with in your imagination. And if there's something outside of that that, that comes to you, then go with that, because that means your divine ancestors and your higher self is giving you another technique that may work better for you. So imagine yourself in that position and allow yourself to feel it as if you were out there doing it right now. There's a specific tree that you'd like to go to that you can think of. You can even use that tree as an example. And again, feel the tree, feel its energy, feel yourself being connected to the earth. If you're imagining yourself walking barefoot in the grass, or standing barefoot, then imagine your legs, feet, turning into roots and entering the earth going very deep. When you start to get that connection in the mind, you should start being able to feel the tingling and the energies being pulled down to your feet out the bottom. So this is a way to ground yourself here without actually doing it in the physical. But of course the physical is, is really good to do uh, as well. Now, if you are someone who is Reiki 2 certified or above, you may be familiar with the symbols Chokure. Chokure symbol of course deals with a certain motion. So since Chokure deals with pulling energy cleansing, I like to place the choku ray under the bottom of the feet because that also allows you to be strongly grounded and rooted because that choku ray energy, you know, of course, bringing the power of the universe here allows you to be grounded uh, with a very strong connection. So here's an example for those who are watching. I want you to slightly, if you can, lift your feet off the ground. If you can't, it'll still work, it's okay. And I'm going to place chokure under the bottom of each foot. Once the symbol is there, you should feel a strong tingling sensation. And again, you should feel like energies are being pulled from the top all the way out the bottom of the foot. Also, while doing this, you can also put the reverse choku ray, which deals with pushing energy above the crown that assists in pushing those energies down out the bottom of the feet. So I place the reverse choku ray facing downward right above the crown. So now you have the choku ray underneath the feet that are pulling down and the reverse choku ray above the crown that's pushing down, creating a, a very strong, uh, a very strong you know, push of energy. Okay, for those who may be Reiki master or Karuna Key Reiki master, there's a symbol called Raku. Raku deals with being able to be grounded. It looks like a lightning bolt symbol. And when you draw it, when you draw the symbol and enter the symbol into the body, it also creates a grounding effect as well. So an example would be me placing Raku into you to allow you to be grounded. Once the symbol enters the body, you should start to feel again, right in the center of the body as the energies are being pulled down. You can always add Choku Ray to that symbol to strengthen it, right? Remember Choku Ray, uh, not only does it uh, activates symbols, but it also brings extra, uh, well, I say amplifies the power to the symbols as well, okay? Okay, 
So um, with these examples, these are examples, you can always use uh, different techniques to help you. Um, with these examples, you know, let, let yourself find new ways and other ways that you can ground or use your imagination to ground yourself. Uh, just like if you're using the crystals, when you do your symbols, uh, the energies of the crystal will also go behind uh, that symbol that you use. So if I did Raku, again, for grounding with selenite and push it into the body, not only do you feel the symbol, but you feel the energy of the selenite working through that symbol as well. So not only are you grounding, selenite is a crystal that also removes blockages from the physical body. So the energy flow is stagnant. Not only are you grounding yourself, but the selenite is also breaking up the stagnant energy to allow that energy to actually move. So that's a technique you may want to try um, if you are Reiki certified and, and you know, know about these symbols. Okay, so now the next exercise we're going to go into, we're going to go into an exercise associated with clearing, okay? There's cleansing and there's clearing. So cleansing deals with, you know, basically cleansing something from, you know, from contamination, from dirt, from negativity. While clearing means to clear from things that doesn't need to be there, which is gonna be like other people's energies, okay? To clear a space of clutter, clear. Okay, we're clearing our energy fields of energy that doesn't need to be there because it's not ours. Okay. So at this time, I would ask you to take another sip of water if you have it on hand. Take another sip of water. Because again, we're going to start to channel energy through the body. And I will also ask that you, uh, afterwards, you grab your two crystals that you chose before we started. Grab two crystals. Okay, so we got some water in so we can start uh, getting ready to channel energy. Okay, so two crystals, one in each hand. It doesn't matter if it's a big crystal or small one, okay? I just chose to use two selenites for the demonstration. And this is also what I like to use um, uh, when I do my own self-healing. But sometimes I might be led to use a different set of crystals. Maybe sometimes I'm, you, I'm uh, led to use rose quartz in one hand and tiger's eye in the other, or clear quartz and labradorite. And then sometimes just selenite, just depends, right? Go with your intuition. So when you have a crystal in each hand, what we want to do is absorb the energies of the crystal in our hands. We want to absorb the energy. So using our mind's eye, our imagination, you want to see, feel, see or feel the energy all the way up until it reaches the top of your head, both arms. Allow the crystal energy to go up the arms till it reaches the top of the head. Now, once the energy reaches the top of the head, at that point, you can let your imagination go. You can just stop and just allow the crystals to do the rest. What will happen is, once the energy reaches the top of the head, they will automatically start to go down the body. And any energies that shouldn't be there, any residual energies that belong to other people, it would automatically start clearing all the way down out the bottom of your feet. So again, hold the crystals, use your imagination, bring the energy of the crystals all the way up to the top of your head, feel it as it reaches the top of your head. And once it reaches the top of your head, let go and let the crystal energy make its way down your physical body all the way into it exits the, the, the bottom of your feet. So let's take about a minute to let that process happen. Hopefully you already started. As this uh, energy is moving through the body, pay attention to where you feel it most. It could be your body letting you know that, that you tend to hold energy more in certain places than others. It can also uh, alarm you about 
any physical pain that you may be having that could be associated with the energies that's being removed as well. So this technique is a technique that uh, I have learned to use before bed so I can clear my energy for the day. And also uh, after a session. So if I'm doing a session, especially one that was emotional for the client or one that dealt with a lot of negative energy, maybe it was a cleanse, then I definitely like to use uh, the crystals to allow, to help me cleanse myself uh, from that energy. So again, this is a technique I would recommend those who are practitioners or healers, uh, tarot readers, um, anyone who does any metaphysical work, I recommend clearing yourself throughout the day and definitely before you go to sleep. Now, what I have found by doing this before you go to sleep is that your dreams come in clearer because you, you've also removed a lot of that clutter that was probably in, in the back of your mind. And it frees up space for your dreams to come in clearer. Sometimes when your dreams are cluttered, it's because you have cluttered energy. So I have found that this works really well to help dreams come in uh, clear. So very simple technique. Hope you all uh, use this for your highest good and know that it definitely works. Okay. So the next part we wanna go into is Empath protection, like how to protect yourself as an empath. Uh, this is probably the reason why most of us are here because we're empaths and we're tired of getting beat up by other people's energy. So one thing about being an empath that you have to know, that you have to know is that you can decide the type of energies you will allow yourself to absorb, right? So there's a thing called spiritual boundaries, emotional boundaries, physical boundaries. And when you set those boundaries, there are certain energies that won't penetrate you because it's a boundary that you set in the universe to keep away. So as an empath, knowing that I have this ability to pick up other people's energies, especially random people, I had to put it out to the universe. Look, I don't want to absorb any energies that I'm not supposed to. Meaning, if it's not for healing purposes or cleansing or divination purposes, I'm helping somebody, I don't want to absorb just random people's energies. Random people's energies that I have no business absorbing, they stay away from me. I command it so, I say. So now I have put a spiritual boundary. I put a boundary out to the universe. Don't send me the energy I don't need. Because why? Too much of it can be too hard on the body. I don't, want to, I don't want to be weighed down every day, all day. So once I started putting this spiritual boundary out there, I noticed when I go to the grocery store and stuff like that, I wouldn't feel nobody's energy. And the only time I will feel somebody's energy is only because I have to tell them about it because maybe there's a message for them. So now the divine says, if we let you feel it, it's because we need you to tell that person something. So if I don't have a message for that person, I don't need to be feeling it. And that's the spiritual boundary I had to set. So setting your boundaries, making it clear to the universe what you want to accept and don't will, will definitely make a huge difference in your, uh, you know, your impact protection. Okay. Okay, another way of protecting yourself as an impact also deals with uh, placing bubbles or shields around you right? Or sometimes just in front of you or behind you. So when we talk about a shield, a shield can be like a, a complete circle or like I said, just something in front of you. So let's say I'm talking to someone who I know is going to attempt to leak all their energy off onto me and they're going to walk away feeling good. And I'm going to be sitting here like, man, you know, drained, uh, bothered by all of their stuff and they just walk away. So if I know this person and I know this is a person who's gonna drain me or that I'm allowing to drain me, I place a shield in the mind's eye between me and that individual. And what that does is it blocks that energy from transferring. So I know I can speak to them without feeling drained afterwards. So as an exercise, this is what I want you to do. 
I want you to imagine someone that you might feel like that with, that you feel like, ooh, I don't know if I want to answer this phone call. I don't know if I want to talk to this person because it's going to be draining or they're going to be complaining or it's going to be something that's going to bring the mood down. And then I want you to imagine yourself placing a glass window, a really thick glass window between you and that person. You can see them on the other side, but that window is between you and that person. I want you to imagine it. And when you imagine it, feel where you feel the energy on you start to dissipate. So if you feel energy in your stomach, for example, starts to go away, then that lets you know that that person was pulling on your power, pulling on your, your life force energy, pulling on your strength. If it comes off in the head, for example, this, per this person likes to tap into your mind. So they might like, they might like to get into your head doesn't always mean it's a sign of manipulation. It just, maybe that they're, they're just so attracted to your mind that they're uh, attaching themselves to it. Okay, it's coming from the chest. It's same thing with the heartstrings. You know, maybe they are pulling on your heart in such a way that you feel pulled and drawn to them, even if it's not necessarily uh, a divine message for you to be, you know, being pulled to them. And how do you know the difference? Because when it's a divine, usually there's a, a comfort. When it's not, there is a little bit dense and, it, and it's a little painful, tight. So sometimes you have to try, to try to differentiate between, am I being drawn to this person divinely or am I being drawn to this person because they're pulling me to them, right? So place a glass window between you and the other person. If you're someone who's a healer or a reader, I recommend even doing the same thing for your clients. Before you fully get deep into the session, place a small glass window between you and the client so that you can allow your clairvoyance, your claircognizant to start working. Before you allow something that may be attached to them to just jump on you, it, it'll be slower and you'll have time to prepare for it versus as soon as you come in contact with them, boom, the energy just latches on. So again, using the imagination to either place a glass window and then in times where you just don't want anything from that person, uh, place, place like a brick wall, like a brick wall between you and that person. P place something strong to keep them, their energy on one side and your energy on the other side, okay? Now you can even do this with people that you love because loved ones, while you love them, they still can be draining, right? Family can be draining. Okay, spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends, children it can be draining. Sometimes you need to put a window between you and your child. Okay, at least for the moment, because they may be acting in a certain way that you don't want to react a certain way to. So now when we talk about bubbles, okay, like a bubble, okay, this is again placing a bubble around you. I like to place bubbles with intentions. So I might say, higher self, place me in a bubble filled with love and light. So then I just imagine a bubble and then the energy of love and light fills up the bubble and I can feel it on my skin surface. I can feel the energy getting cooler, like a cool breeze. And as I feel the love and light energy in the bubble, I can feel myself getting lighter. The love and light energy can act as a cleansing itself. So as the energy moves within your aura, then the love and light energy can replace any bad energies that may have been in your aura, that leaked into your aura. I also like to layer my protection. So if I place a bubble filled with love and light around me, I tell myself to do it times three, three layers. So that's one. And then there's one on the outside of that and there's one on the outside of that. So I got three layers of protection minimum. Now that's just what I like to do personally, okay? Because depending on the type of energy you come across, those energies are gonna knock at those shields until they eventually get through. So when you place these shields, these bubbles around you, you have to remember that they have to be recharged, okay? Now, what is that saying? It can be simply just saying, look, Okay, I ask my higher self, place myself in a bubble of love and light times three. Now 12 hours has passed. I'm starting to feel some things. 
because I was out in the public. I'm going to just take a second and stop and I will tell my higher self to uh, uh, heal and repair those shields, those bubbles, or just ask my higher self to place a new one, place new ones around me. But a rule of thumb I like to live by is at a minimum, two times a day, especially if you're an empath, right? You want to make sure at least twice a day you place your shields around to your bubbles. You want to do it before you actually start engaging with other people during the day, especially before you leave the home. And you want to do it before you go to bed because while you're sleeping, your physical body can still have other energies latch on to it. Plus, it also helps you be protected while you're in dream state. So at least twice a day before you get out and about and before you lay down and go to sleep. So before bed, while you're laying there, this is a good time to do uh, self-healing, self-reiki, if you're Reiki certified, to do uh, your protection shields, to start clearing your energy. That's a good time to do that before you uh, go to bed. Okay. Another, well, before we go into the symbols, we're going we're gonna to do a demonstration in the practice. So let's start with the bubbles. So we already did the shields, imagining between you and another person. Now for yourself, I want you to tell your higher self, your higher self to place you in a bubble filled with love and light. We'll just go with love and light right now. And then if you feel led, you can add anything to that bubble. So higher self, place me in the bubble filled with love and light, Ashe. Or you can say amen or namaste. Now that your higher self places you in this bubble, filled with love and light. Again, pay attention to the energy, pay attention to where you feel it working most. Also, uh, pay attention to the temperature changes. You should start to feel like a cool breeze is flowing around you. Okay, hopefully by now, you're starting to feel the energy work on you. And again, you may even feel it cleansing certain parts of the body that needed to be cleansed. Okay, so next part we're gonna go into is going to be symbols, using symbols for protection. Now there's different ways to use symbols for protection, whether it's using the imagination or actually drawing it on paper. So if I was using my imagination, I want to, again, uh, use my imagination to place the symbols in different places where it would protect me most. There's a thing called a Reiki sphere which is a protection sphere that deals with the symbol Chokurei to those who are Reiki certified. And the Chokurei, when you place it in the front of you, the back of you, left and right side of you, above the crown and below the root chakra, it creates a golden sphere around you of protection. And since Chokurei is a protection symbol of itself, when you think of having six Chokurei symbols on all sides of you, then it's protecting you all around 360. Now, let's say you're not Reiki certified. You have no idea what I'm talking about. What is a Choku Ray? There are other symbols that you can use to do the same exact thing. One example is the blue evil eye protection. Now, some traditions say that that blue evil eye can bring you harm, while other traditions say that this evil eye is a protection symbol. So how you look at the symbol is how the symbol will work for you. When I look at the symbol, even though it's called the evil eye, I'm not calling it that. Like, I don't look at it that way. I look at it as a protection symbol to protect me against evil. So because I look at it that way, that's how it's going to work for me. So I imagine a symbol facing outwards on six sides. Again, in front of me, facing out, back of me, facing out, left and right, top and bottom, facing out meaning facing outward. So whatever comes towards the shields, it can reflect it. So use your imagination, use either Chokurei 
or you can use the evil eye protection symbol or any other symbol of protection that you may feel that you want to use. Place the symbols in the front, back, left, right, top and bottom, and then feel as any negative energy, negative intentions towards you, you should start to feel those energies dissipate immediately. So let's take a minute or so and do this. And again, pay attention to where you feel it. Pay attention if you've seen a face or heard a name or heard a place that you may have picked up this energy from. So as you place the symbols in those positions, you should be able to feel it. Now, for those who are Reiki certified, uh, I like to actually use both symbols. So what I did is uh, I used a Choku Ray with the Evi protection symbol and another Choku Ray, like in a sandwich. If you remember the Reiki sandwiches you can make with symbols. And then I placed those set of symbols on the six sides of me to just amplify its power. And now I got two forms of protection. You can also use symbols of protection uh, based on your cultural, religion, spiritual systems. For example, someone who may be a Christian, you may wanna use the cross and place it on six sides. If that's a symbol that you look at for protection. If you're spiritual and you're into the Ankh, the cross of life, you may wanna use that in your six sides uh, for protection. Whatever symbols that you want to use for protection, you can use this method for. You are not limited to the ones I use as, as an example today. Now, another way you can do this, if you want to save some of your mental energy, let's say you're mentally tired and you just can't focus to put these symbols uh, where they need to be, you can also do it on paper. You take a, paper, take a piece of paper and you just draw a little stick figure. I like to use stick figures. Draw a little stick figure, okay? And above, you put the symbol, both sides, bottom, and then you can write one on top of the stick figure to simulate the front, and you can write another one, kind of like maybe offset of the body a little bit with the intentions of simulating the back, right? When you write it, you'll know which order you're putting it in. You just gotta draw it and just know that's where it's going. So you can write it, and then it'll start working immediately. So if you don't want to, again, if you're tired, like sometimes I've done so many readings and healings, my mind just don't feel like working right now, I'll get my pen and paper, pencil and paper, and I'll start drawing it. And then I'll let the paper sit there and just let the energy work um, until I feel like it's done. So you can also do the same on paper. Now, when it comes to, again, these techniques, you can do these techniques around your home. Because again, as an empath, you don't want to be in your own home with a bunch of negative energy or a bunch of energy other people may have uh, sent towards you. So you can do this around your, your home, your vehicles, and you can also place these symbols around your children and your loved ones. You know, if you're an empath, most likely if you have children, at least one of them may be an empath as well. A lot of gifts or bloodlines are passed down through bloodline. So placing uh, these around your children will help them. Now, if you have a child, for example, who tends to kind of cry a lot, and you say, well, what's wrong with you? And they'd be like, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. That child's probably an empath. That child probably really doesn't know why he or she is crying. So if you have one of those children who are very sensitive like that, place these symbols around your child to protect them from the outside energies that may be influencing them. Because the symbols goes outward, not only will it protect you from the outside, but it also will pull things out of you that shouldn't be there as well. Because as the protection says, any ill intentions or any negative negativity, other people's energies, if it's not supposed to be here, then the protection automatically takes it and places it on the outside of the symbols or the shields. Okay, let's talk about life force energy. Life force energy. There are some parts of us that live lifetime after lifetime. And then there's parts of, of us 
that only live for a specific lifetime. What lives for this specific lifetime is your soul and the life force energy along with it. So your Kundalini, some people call it. Kundalini is the life force energy that goes up the spine, raising your consciousness, your awareness, enlightenment. This is like the source of your energy. It's like your own signature energy that, that differentiates you from another person, another spirit, another being. The soul is also, again, just for this lifetime. So when a person's life force energy is being drained from them, it makes your soul tired. And then when your soul is tired, because the body is a reflection of what's going on inside, then the body gets tired. So in other words, what I'm saying, when you're physically tired, it could be because your soul is tired. And if your soul is tired, it could be that your life force energy has been drained. So this life force energy, we have to call back to us because sometimes we unintentionally leave our life force energy in other people. Let's say somebody was uh, crying and you gave them a hug and in you hugging them, they felt better. They may have absorbed some of your life force energy and you may have given them some of it because you were trying to help them feel better, but you don't want to leave it out there, right? Because then that life force energy will continue to be pulled on. So what you have to do is call your own life force energy back to you, but you want it to be cleansed and purified so that as your own life force energy returns to you, it's not, it doesn't have other people's energies attached to it. This is some again at an impact. I recommend you do it anytime you feel drained. One of the first things you should do is call back your life force energy with the intentions of it being cleansed and purified as it returns. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, do a demonstration. We're gonna practice it. Again, you're gonna simply call back your life force energy with the intentions of it being cleansed and purified as it returns. And you do it by just simply saying it, okay? At this time, I call back all of my life force energy, cleansed and purified, Ashe. At this time, I call back all of my life force energy, cleansed and purified, Ashe. And as you call back your energy, you should start to feel energy actually enter the physical body. You should actually feel it. And then as it enters, you should actually feel rejuvenated by that. You actually should feel your body starting to rejuvenate. So let's take a minute, allowing your life force energy to return to you and feel it as it comes back. Now the same works with the Kundalini, which I said that's the the, goes up the spine, sometimes represented as a snake or two snakes weaving in and out of the chakras. You know, sometimes it's good to call that back as well, even though they can be looked at as the same thing. So you can either say life force energy or you can call your Kundalini back to you. Calling your Kundalini back to you is like calling your power back to you, right? you've been in situations where you feel like you've lost part of yourself or part of your power, calling your Kundalini back will also bring your power back. Okay, the same thing with soul. The soul sometimes can be fragmented and left in other places, situations, memories. So as an empath, you're gonna find yourself, I'm sure, leaving parts of yourself with other people to help them heal. But again, our job as healers is to promote the healing within, within them, right? So we can't leave ourselves there permanently working on them. We have to call our soul back to us. I command my soul to fully return to me, cleansed and purified, Ashe. I command my soul to return to me fully, cleansed and purified, Ashe. 
call it back to you. Call your soul back to you. Your soul is for you for this lifetime and you don't want to give it away, okay? So I like to let some people borrow for a little bit if you choose to, but you don't want to leave it out there. I recommend don't let them borrow it either. Teach them how to heal themselves, right? So calling back the life force energy, commanding for it to be cleansed and purified. Cleansed and purified. Now the first layer of protection when it comes to the empath is the aura, the energy field, the aura, right? Your aura is developed based on what you feel inside. Your aura comes off of your own strength. Um, and your aura has to be healed and cleansed periodically to protect you from the negativity and the other energies that are out there. So there's a couple of ways you can repair your aura. It can simply be by commanding your higher self to do it, which is probably one of the easiest ways. But to strengthen it and to really make it strong is to power up your aura from your kundalini, right? From that life force energy in the spine. So a nice way to do it is uh, I like to see it as a gold energy because gold is a very strong protective color. And I feel the gold energy go up the spine. Feel the gold energy go up the spine. You can even use your imagination and see it and see the energy go up. And once the energy reaches the top of the head, then now I take that golden energy from my spine and I spread it all the way outside of the body, however far you want it to go. Now, some people, we naturally do this. Like um, some people just have big R's, right? Everybody R sizes are different. So you spread it out at a minimum three feet from the body. That's usually a good distance to have your R spread out. It's about three feet outside of the body. Now you can even command the feet that you want away from yourself or meters or inches. If I said higher self, um, spread my R out to 50 feet, then that's what it would do. Now the issue with that is that sometimes when your R is big like that, if you do that, once somebody walks into that 50 feet into that R, your R can absorb what's in their R and then it makes one big R. So that means your R has to be strong enough to kick out their stuff versus absorb it and then you have it now. So every time two people walk next to each other, the two R's becomes one big R. You know, the old saying, there was a, a what do you call it? A, a, you know, people say, if you split the pole, it's supposed to be bad luck, right? So what happens when you split the pole when two people are walking together? If the R's have become one and you split the pole, the aura now has a gap in it. And any negativity that was around can now enter both auras because there's holes in them. And then once the negativity enters those auras and then you get back together on the other side of the pole, guess what? Now that one aura forms again with the negativity inside of it that happened during that break when y'all split up. So that is like the science behind why it's considered bad luck to split the pose when two people are walking because it breaks up the energy field. It breaks up the aura. Naturally, when we're walking with our children, we like to keep them close when we're in public, right? We like to keep them close. Why? Because in our mind, our spirit knows by keeping them close, our aura is to protect them by keeping them close to us. Even if you didn't know that's why you instinctively do that, this is what's happening in the mind, in the spirit. The spirit is saying, pull the child close so that that child's aura can mix with yours. And since yours is a stronger one, your aura can protect the child energetically. So your aura as an empath is very important. This is why a lot of empaths don't like to be close to people. 
So if you're one of those empaths who now, you know, man, I really don't like people getting too close to me. Now you see why, because those two R's merge and then you can feel everything that, that's on them. So keeping that distance from them helps the empath not absorb other people's energies unintentionally. Repairing your R throughout the day, definitely before bed, I uh, highly recommend, especially before bed. Again, commanding your higher self to heal and repair your R. Your higher self is the God version of you. Your higher self will do whatever you need to do because it's you. So if I say higher self, heal and repair my aura or my energy fields, it's gonna happen automatically. You just have to trust yourself because it's you. Trust yourself that when I say it, it's gonna happen. So I want you to give it a try. Higher self, heal and repair my aura. Heal and repair my energy fields, whatever words you wanna use, but y'all know what we're talking about. Energy fields, the auras. Command your higher self to do it and then feel as the aura is being repaired. Feel as the aura is being repaired. Most likely you're gonna feel it on the skin surface, but sometimes you might feel parts of the aura a little deeper into the skin because there may be a cord that's attached to you that the aura is pushing out as it's being healed. And then also as you feel where the R is being repaired, this also should let you know where you have vulnerabilities the most. So if you feel it in the head more, then you may be someone who may be easily manipulated. People are able to get you to let your guards down easily to get in your mind. If you feel it in the stomach, then you may be someone who allows people to pull your energy drain you so you feel it in the stomach more because you, you leave that space open okay same thing in the chest you're letting yourself love people who you shouldn't probably be around I mean, you can love them that doesn't mean you have to be attached to them they're not for your highest good so then that can be uh like almost like a contaminated cord a contaminated uh cord that messes with that particular energy center so again, feel where you feel the vulnerabilities in your R and then pay attention on how it gets there. Okay, do a little recap. So again, an empath is someone who protects, or I'm sorry, an empath is someone who has empathy on a supernatural level, able to feel deeply what another person is feeling, whether it's emotions, feelings, physical pain, or different energies. An empath can be a gift or a curse depending on how you approach it and how you accept it. Running away from being an empath will not help. If it's a divine ability that you have, you have to embrace it and just protect yourself while using it. It does not have to be a curse. Make sure we're grounding daily, whether it's out there in the grass with the trees or using our imagination to simulate doing these things so that we can actually allow it to happen. You just need to believe what you see. Using the crystals to clear yourself of other people's energies and energies that no longer serves you. Remember, good time to do that is for bed, holding one crystal in each hand pulling the crystal energy up to the top of your head, then allowing the crystal energy to flush your of the energies you don't need. Place your shields and your bubbles around you daily. Use your symbols around you daily. At a minimum twice a day when you wake up, before you leave, and definitely before you go to bed. And if you are someone who does services for others, make sure you do it after your sessions. After each session, if you're a practitioner, make sure you call back your life force energy. If you find yourself engaged with someone in the public or even someone in the home, uh, a loved one, friends, same thing, call back your life force energy with the intentions of it being cleansed and purified. 
cleansed and purified, very important. Make sure you strengthen your R daily. You can do it the same technique. Imagine the gold energy up the spine and then spreading out outside of the body, creating a force field, if you will. You can use these same techniques on your children, your loved ones, and you can even use the same techniques on your clients as well. If you are a Reiki practitioner or healer, reader, do the same thing. Okay, I hope this class have been enlightening for you. I hope uh, this class helps you uh, be empowered as an empath versus uh, feeling like it's a weakness, something that beats you down. Uh, be empowered to know that you have the ability to choose the type of energies you want to accept and reject. And as an empath, you do not have to be turned on all the time. You can tell yourself to turn it off. You know what? I'm not empathing today. Today I'm turning it off. It's okay to take a break from it. So be empowered and embrace yourself as an empath and use it divinely versus allowing others to just dump on you as they see fit. Stay grounded, stay hydrated, stay light. Have a beautiful evening, morning, or afternoon, depending on when you're watching this video. And hope to see you in the next class. Ashay.